You know how they say you don't do anything by watching hockey all day? Well, today you could actually do that. There are 13 games in the KHL today and we're going to talk about all of them. My name is Andrea Sachnika and this is your daily KHL update. Welcome to St. Petersburg for our top game of the day. SKA meets Red Army and the Olympic torch is in the building tonight. Captain Silly Kovalchuk and Alexey Morozov get to skate around the rink with it before the puck drop. And off we go. First period, Roman Trevenka sees Yuli Kovalchuk wide open in the high slot, dishes it over to him and Kovic sends it home, 1-0 SKA. Late in the period now, Daniel Markov gives up the puck in his own end, turnover and Viktor Tikhonov scores his 12th of the season to make it 2-0 SKA. And his grandfather, Viktor Tikhonov Sr. is obviously happy about this, as he attended the game with WIHS president Rene Fazel. Early in the second, now Cherenka sets out Dmitry Kalina this time for a shot. He goes for it, rebound, and Vadim Shipachevs makes it 3 0 SKA. And just like that, Cherenka gets his second assist of the night. He's tied for first in the league with 19 assists this season. Stanis Knight is down after that. Is it gonna help Red Army though? Not really. Less than two minutes later, Alexey Ponikarovsky has the puck on the right wing. Reset, and he scores his fourth of the season. 4 0 SKA now, early in the second. Red Army has sure missed their wake-up call tonight. Former SKS defenseman Sergei Zubov wonders what went wrong on Red Army's bench. A little later, Maxim Gucherov nicely shields the puck, cuts into the slot and scores a beauty. It's still 4-1 SKA, but a nice goal like that can create a spark for a team, and Red Army needs one badly. Late in the period, Nikolai Proforkin has the puck, is not giving it up, sets up Sergei Shirokov in the slot, and he's denied by Alexander Salak. Is this guy for real? I could have bet my month's salary that was going in. I mean, good thing I didn't do that. Still in the second, Red Army gives up the puck again. That creates a 2 1 rush, and Artemi Panarin makes it 5 1 SKA. Panarin with his sixth of the season, and that definitely puts this one out of reach for Red Army. Captain Alexey Morozov will go on to score his fourth goal of the season on a power play, but that hardly affects the final score. SKA gets a very convincing W on home ice as they take down Red Army 5 2. Let's head over to Oms now, where Avangard meets Metalurg Magnitogorsk. I can't believe Avangard is a heavy underdog in this one, but that's the way it is these days. First period, Avangard is on a power play. Miroslav Platak shoots from the blue line. Maxim Kazakov keeps it, and that's a goal. 1-0 Avangard. 20-year-old Kazakov scores his first career KHL goal. He spent one season with his Huskies in the QNJHL. A little later, Alex Babov has the puck in the slot. He's stopped by Kosichkin. Pirozhokin gets the puck. He loses it for Maxim Kazakov and he makes it 2 0 Avangard as he scores his second of the night. It's a bit odd to see Kazakov playing with experienced guys like Popov and Pirozhokin, but it obviously works for Avangard. Midway to the second, now still 2 0 Avangard, but not anymore. Sergei Mazakin gets one past Matthew Guran. It's 2 1 now. Late on the period, Evgeny Timkin carries the puck on the right wing. Nice move. He's in the slot. Scores. We tied it too, as Timkin scores a thing of beauty. And what makes this go extra special is that Timkin made a name for himself when he was in Avangard a few years ago. Third period now, Zaripov and Mazakin run away for a 2 on 1. Mazakin gets the puck, and that's just gross. Mazakin scores his second of the night, and he makes it 3 2 Magnitka. Avangard's coaching staff can only shake their heads in disbelief. A little after that, Mr. Mazakin completes his hat trick with a nice slap shot on a power play. 4-2 Magnitka and it doesn't look like Avangard is going to recover from that. Moreover, Magnitka is going to put a dagger in as Denis Zaripov scores his 15th of the year 5 minutes later to give us our final. 5-2 Magnitka. Mike Keenan's team scored 5 unanswered goals to overcome a 2-goal deficit. Avangard now has the third worst record in the Eastern Conference and they're only 4 points away from the rock bottom. We're in Zagreb, Croatia now, where Medvedchuk hosts some more. Medvedchuk opens up their home series with the game. They completed a four-game road trip where they picked up just one point. We'll pick it up from the second period. Zip Zip on the board so far. Amor is killing a penalty, and Jan Morsik runs away for a breakaway. He's stopped by Barry Brust, though. We know he likes going for athletic saves, and this one was very timely. I wouldn't be surprised if we're going to see it again on our top 10 saves of the week chart. Steal in the second, Matt Merle puts the puck on net through heavy traffic and that goes in, 1-0 Medvedchuk. Medvedchuk was peppering Amor's net all game long but couldn't get anything past Alexei Morigan. This time they finally scored. Third period now, Evgeny Kortkov has the puck, leaves it for Jakob Petrozhalek, he shoots, he scores, 1-1. Petrozhalek scores his seventh of the year, just like Matt Merle, and now overtime looks very real. 
but just one minute later, Jonathan Chichu has the puck on the left wing. He shoots, that's blocked. He dishes them from Merle in front, and he scores his second of the night. 2 1 Medvishak now. With this goal, Matt Merle now has eight this year. Their chemistry with Chichu is really impressive. And that's gonna do it. Medvishak ends their losing streak with a 2 1 win over Amor on home ice. They are tied for fifth in the Western Conference with Atlant now. Sanjas Oslinch and Dynamo Riga go head to head with Igor Radulov and Atlant. Should be a really close game. We pick it up from the second. Matt Robinson gets the puck on the far post. He's all alone. Stanislav Galimov stops him. Mayhem ensues. Paul Shahura gets the puck. Now goes for a wraparound. And somehow the puck does not get deflected in. I'm not making this up. See for yourself. It didn't go in. Early in the third now. Riga has a man advantage. And it's other Nijibi sets up for self holds the first shot. And he drives it in. 1 0 Dynamo Riga. Hosa scores his ninth of the season. There's just something about Riga and Hosa, you know? When you put the two together, beautiful things happen. Just over three minutes left in regulation. Atlant has pulled their goalie already. They have a power play on top of that, and Konstantin Kaltsov makes it work as he ties this game up with his eighth of the season. It was very opportunistic on Atlant's part, but who's gonna care about that now when they scored? It goes to a shootout. Yuri Trubachov goes first for Atlant. And that's good, they take the lead in this one. Second round, Roberts Brookers shoots for Dynamo Riga. And it's a tie game again, 1-1. Final round, Alexey Mikhnov shoots for Atlant. No goal! That means Alex Nijivi has the game on his stick now. And he wins it for Dynamo with a great wrister. 2-1 Dynamo shootout final. Riga gets two points and they continue to sit comfortably in the third spot in the West. Petteri Virtanin goes up against Evgeny Ivanikov as Donbass host Admiral. We pick it up from the second. Sergei Verlamov sets up Petr Podgratsky for a shot and into the net it goes. 1-0 Donbass. Podgratsky scores his fourth of the season. He's a reliable defenseman who's no stranger to his scoring touch. Short left of that, Clay Wilson breaks into the zone. Dishes it over to Maxim Yukutsenia. Back to Wilson and he bangs it in from mid-air. 2-0 Donbass. Wilson scores his fifth of the year and his offensive skills shouldn't surprise anybody. He used to be a forward. Admiral gets one back late in the second as Nicholas Beckford sucks it in after a missed shot by Igor Antropa. That's his eighth of the year and that's a tricky one. And that's how this one is gonna end. 2-1 Donbass is your final. Donbass is fourth in the West with 34 points and Admiral is seventh in the East with 28. Martin Skula and Sloan visit Yaroslavl to play Vitaly Koval and Lokomotiv. First seconds of regulation, Yegor Averian passes to Sergei Plotnikov, he goes behind the net and he scores! 1-0 Lokomotiv is with just 19 seconds dip. Plotnikov scores his third of the season, he's considered for Team Russia for the upcoming international break. Three minutes later, Plotnikov has the puck behind Slovak's net again. This time he sets up in Yagarokov and the captain makes no mistake, 2-0 Lokomotiv. Garokov won back-to-back -back championship titles with Dynamo Moscow before joining his hometown's team, that's his first of the year. Second period now, Danilo Valkov takes a hard shot and he hits Sergei Plotnikov right in the face. Ouch! Yeah, that doesn't look very nice and Plotnikov, who scored two points in the opening frame, will not come back to the ice after that. Still in the second, Miklas Redlis gets on a breakaway and he doesn't score as Miroslav Koprozhiva makes a great athletic poke check. That was a very bold move by him, but it paid off. Early in the third now, Michel Miklik has the puck on the power play, looking for a pass, decides to launch it himself and he scores! 2-1 now as Miklik scores his seventh of the year. He had just nine last season. Looks like he's gonna surpass that pretty soon. And that's all she wrote for this one. 2-1 Lokomotiv is your final. Slovan remains on the bottom of the Western Conference, while Loko is now just one point away from the playoff zone. Evgeny Kuznetsov scored two goals on Vitaly Yurimeyev and that helped Traktor to take down Boris on the road. Andrei Kastitsin also scored for the visiting team and they enjoyed a somewhat surprising 5-1 win. Traktor returned to the playoff zone after that win as well. Yugro was trailing to Salavat 3-1 after 20 minutes of play but managed to tie it up midway through the second stanza. Salavat still managed to get a W in regulation as they won 5-4. Salvat may be the most exciting team to watch these days in the KHL. Their games always feature a ton of goals. Lev scored first on Cherepovets, but they couldn't hold on to their lead. Anatoly Nikonsev and Vadim Bernikov scored for Sevastal and they took three points on home ice. Goalie Jakob Stepanek stopped 35 out of 36 shots.
Wojda Kowalski scored his seventh of the season and Radin Chems just 42 seconds into the game, but Torpedo still didn't get a single point on the road. Martin Skarsum scored both goals for Dynamo Moscow. The blue and white got 50 points in 23 games now and they're tied with SKA for first in the league. Alexey Kapikin opened up the scoring with just 3 seconds left on the clock in the first period and Sibir never let go since then. Yunus Enlund scored a pair and Mitya Kukrashev helped with his 6th of the year. Sibir is currently 5th in the East while Minsk is tough for Sloan from the worst record in the Western Conference. Slava Kozlov scored a goal and picked up 2 assists for 3 points tonight as Spartak took down Kuzhnya. Game-winning goal was scored by captain Denis Badrov, that also happened to be his first of the season. Kuzhnya had a 4-3 lead up to 40 minutes of play too. Fedor Malikhin enjoyed another great offensive night as he picked up two points against Neptihimik tonight to bring up Tambilista 3-2 win. Oilers prospect Bogdan Yakimov scored in his second game in a row for Neptihimik, but that wasn't enough. After Tambilista is tied for seventh spot in the East with Admiral and Traktor now. And that's it for your daily KHL update. We'll be back again tomorrow, but with just one game as Akbar's will host Vitez. That's gonna be quite a change in comparison with today's 13 games, huh? My name is Andreas Sachinke. See you tomorrow.